wonderful days. And I'll tell you, uh, we're living in, in uh, days as exciting because I think every day it goes by, we see just a little bit more uh, transpire that is uh, fulfilling prophecy. And uh, to me, that's exciting. It may be boring to you, but I like to see God keep His Word. Because I know if He keeps His Word there, He's going to keep it to me. <clears throat> So if you have your Bibles tonight, uh, let's turn to, uh, uh, let's go with 1 Thessalonians 5, 4. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Let's pick up verse 3, or yeah, verse 3 and go on down to verse 4. For when they shall say peace and safety, kind of hear that today, don't you? Then sudden destruction come up upon them as travail as a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others. But let us watch <clears throat> and be sober. Uh, I like that part, we're not children of the darkness. Uh, God <clears throat> will always reveal uh, to his prophets what he's going to do. Uh, when he was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, I think I mentioned this probably a month or so back, uh, he said, should I not reveal to Abraham what I'm going to do? And uh, he went, made a special trip by where Abraham was, uh, had dinner with him, of course, and told him what he was going to do. And uh, the, the whole uh, underlaying of that, God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And we really need to remember that. Uh, God is not mad at the sinner. He's mad at sin. He's not mad at people. Uh, he uh, loves people, and naturally uh, he wants to save them. And uh, as God was speaking this to uh, Abraham concerning Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, the whole context of his visit there naturally was to let Abraham know what was going to transpire, but also to give Abraham the opportunity of standing in the gap for those people, which he did. And uh, he talk to the Lord as a man talking to him face to face and uh, ask him, and you know the story, if there's uh, 40 there, will you save, will you destroy all of them or destroy them with the others? And God said, no, I won't. And he got him down <coughs> to five. And uh, in doing that, he was the world's first Jew. Pretty good bargainer, brother. When you can out bargain God, you're, you're pretty good. A horse trader. But uh, God always has, and He always will keep His people informed. And uh, this is why we have Bible, this is why we have Bible study, and this is why that you should constantly uh, watch the chain of events that's uh, transpiring today. Uh, his coming is uh, <coughs> will be in order of the Scripture, and uh, so will the coming of the beast. And uh, I put this up here just to let you know what we're talking about. Uh, how many of you realize that uh, uh, the devil is a master of disguise? You've found that out, haven't you? If you haven't, you will. Uh, sometimes it might come as a, a great surprise to you. Uh, but he's the master of disguise. Uh, he's the master of deception. And uh, he is a 100% destroyer. Uh, I would say we, we all uh, probably pride ourselves in uh, friendship of people, uh, but the devil hates every one of us. And his main goal in life is to destroy you. And in doing so, he breaks the heart of God. But uh, this is what he's been up to for many, many years, and uh, <clears throat> he's still doing it today. But he has, as I said, and uh, as we have the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, uh, Satan has a Godhead also. Jesus said that he was the God of this world, so we're quoting from the Master himself. Uh, he will have a son. That son will come from the pit, uh, Revelation 17, 8. 
and he will be the counterfeit of Jesus. He will have a false prophet, which will be the counterfeit of the Holy Spirit, and he will give witness unto this one. Uh, it, God uh, naturally always works together with the uh, Son and the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, uh, he will not talk of himself, but he will testify of me. And uh, this individual here that's going to show up uh, is going to testify not of himself, although he will do great things, wondrous things. Uh, events uh, through his false ministry, but it will always point to this, and this will always point to that. Uh, the devil is desirous still of destroying uh, the people, destroying the things that God loves, and he won't quit until he's in the pit. Uh, signs are abounding everywhere. I read a article uh, this week of a pastor. Uh, he had uh, gone, I believe it was Buffalo, I'm not 100% on that, New York, and uh, for a conference. When the conference was over, he boarded a plane back to L.A. where he was pastoring. And uh, as he sat there looking out the window waiting for the plane to board and the people to uh, get settled down and everything, a very distinguished looking gentleman sat down by him, and uh, he uh, uh, had a, and on the briefcase he had a newspaper, and he couldn't help but seeing uh, part of the headline, not the main headline, but uh, right under it, uh, about the uh, common market of Europe. So this gentleman sat down, and uh, they, he introduced himself and said, uh, I couldn't help but see on the newspaper there uh, concerning the uh, common market of of uh, Europe. He said, uh, what do you think about that? And the gentleman smiled at him. He said, well, I think quite a bit of it because I uh, financed the structure of that. And uh, <laughs> the pastor was kind of taken back. And he said, well, how did you do that? He said, by $7 billion. So they began to uh, converse. And uh, the man had, had just brought out uh, things that we've been hearing about uh, not so long ago, maybe a year and a half, 18 months ago. And uh, he told the pastor, he said, uh, he, he let him know that he was Jewish, and he said, the only hope for the world that we live in is a one-world government. And he said, this is why that I have invested $7 billion in the structure of a government taking in all of Europe. Excuse me. And he says, after we uh, get the one world government in complete operation, we will try to find a one world leader. And then when we get those two settled, we will have a one world religion. And uh, the pastor thought, boy, here's a good place to testify. And he said, well, what do you think about that one world religion being Christianity? And the man just changed, and he looked at him and said, young man, get real. Christianity lost its chance. Now, those are pretty hard words for Christians, but uh, this is what's transpiring, and uh, it's going to happen in mine and your day. And uh, the gentleman told him, he said, everything is set, everything is planned, and everything will be in order as soon as we get the cooperation of the United States. Now, I don't know if you were watching your news yesterday, but uh, this man had talked about, and he told this pastor that the only thing that will save the economy of the world is for that economy, economy to be a globalized socialistic economy and one world government, one world ruler. The uh, uh, Prime Minister of Great Britain came over here Monday and spent Monday and Tuesday in conference with our president. And last night at 5 o'clock, when they had brought up something that uh, they had both agreed on, the uh, leader of Great Britain made this statement. We decided that we need a globalization of the economy. 
Because what hurts the United States hurts Europe. And what hurts Europe hurts all the rest of the nations. Folks, do you see where we are? Now, these are things that if, you're, if you don't have your antenna up, maybe I got mine too high, uh, but because it's pointing to what we know is going to transpire uh, in the coming days. And uh, these things are, uh, well, a few years ago, uh, if I had said to you what I've said tonight, it would be laughable. People say, oh, that'll never happen. There's no way that'll happen. But it's happening. And it's right on time. It's not early. It's not late. God does everything on His timetable and on His schedule. He's never too early for an appointment. He's never too late. And God has everything fixed up. Now, I want to make you understand that uh, uh, we, we have a, an enemy, and uh, Jesus called him the God of this world, which he is. But... God's got him on a leash just like a sheepdog. He can only go so far at a given time, and he will operate at God's and on God's time schedule and not upon his. So when you hear and see these things, don't become fearsome, uh, but begin to praise the Lord because uh, the Lord has allowed us to see the things uh, that's going to transpire. How much of this we're going to see, uh, we don't know. We don't know what's in the mind of the Father. Uh, Jesus don't even know what's in the mind of the Father. And uh, I want to point out something in passing. I, I haven't mentioned this before. Uh, I was talking to uh, Brother Buck last Sunday, and before that I had run across something on the uh, uh, network of prophecy. Sister, what was, what's the name of that, Sister? Prophecy News Watch, and a very uh, uh, outstanding prophet uh, teacher uh, had an article on there as well as the other one, and I read the other one more than the, the gentleman that I uh, know because uh, I, I didn't know the other fellow. But uh, we're talking about false prophets, right? There is a prophetic word if you allow me to use that description, coming out of uh, Guatemala, and uh, some Mayan Indian has been discovered down there, and he's prophesying that Jesus will come in uh, 2012. Now, isn't that amazing that a man living in the jungle knows more than God? Because God don't know when he's going to send him. And if God knows, Jesus don't know yet. And uh, I'm beginning to wonder if, uh, if this man is true, <clears throat> if we're on the right side of the fence and in the right pasture or not. But I know I am, don't you? I know that God is still in control, and I know that Jesus said that he would come at the hour uh, when we think not. So we know the hour he's going to come, we just don't know the day. But uh, things that were laughable uh, years ago are uh, coming to pass today, and uh, if you will just allow me to bring up a few things, and you think on these, and uh, just remember things that uh, has happened that we took for granted, but it's not for granted at all. Uh, it was then, perhaps, but uh, today uh, it's, it's events that are setting the stage for one world government to take over. Uh, years ago, uh, I always bought tools, or Sylvia bought tools for me, and, uh, I, you know, I always had SAE tools. You know what SAE is, tools? Uh, got a mechanic here. But good old American-made SAE tools. And then I noticed that they were slipping in metric tools. And uh, you'd have a, an American-made car and want to work on it, and without realizing, you had a metric wrench. So you had to go buy a SAE wrench, or vice versa. Now, maybe we didn't think much about that, but they were indoctrinating us into the world world system and not even letting us know about it, and us perhaps not even thinking about it. And uh, it uh, kind of slipped up on us. 
uh, the regular SAE system, and uh, we noticed uh, perhaps, uh, well, it probably p pleased us to have it happen because it was so convenient. Uh, we became a cashless society. You remember when that came in? Wilma well, using the bank at that time. I don't know if that's good for you or not, but it became a cashless society, and uh, everyone had credit cards, and the majority of those credit cards was recognized, not just in the United States, but I'll guarantee you the credit card you have in your pocket today is recognized worldwide. Why is that? Because we are being indoctrinated little by little by little into a one-world government. Automatic pay deposits, it's called EFT, Electronic Fund Transfer. How many of you draw Social Security? How many of you take the check to the bank, or you just say, I want the convenience of having it deposited for me? Let me see your hands. Okay, now we didn't think a thing about that, did we, buddy? When they pulled, they thought... My, what a wonderful convenience. I don't have to worry about it being stole out of my mailbox out here on Star Route. I don't have to go down there in the rain and cash it and deposit it. Why, Social Security is going to send that to the bank. Now, that's an innocent thing to happen, but it's fitting in with one world system. Yeah. That's right. But yeah, you got a choice, but now the government's stealing it. I don't even get to have the fun of signing my name on the back. That's what I used to like about working on the farm. I'd get a check, at least I could go to the bank and put my name on the back. I don't even get to do that anymore. <clears throat> uh, we, uh, we make deposits and we withdraw by using a PIN number. Now, if I haven't got anything else over to you folks in five months, I hope I got over to you that the book is full of numbers and symbols. And here, without me even knowing it, I've got a number attached to my name besides my Social Security number. And that PIN number gives me recognition in banks, in business dealings, in credit card with me, I'm known wherever the United States does business, I'm known by a number. Now, you let that sink in for a moment. What are we going to be demanded and forced to take up on us when this fellow takes control? We're going to be forced to take a number. Now, I wasn't forced to take a PIN number, I was forced to take a Social Security number when I turned 16, I was forced to have a driver's license number, and I'm forced to have an Air Force number, and in dealing with anything that uh, goes along with my Air Force days and retirement, I have to know and quote the last four digits of my number. But you know what we all say? I'll never take that number. But yet, we take it so innocently. You missed the point. Beware. And <clears throat> this is the quote that this gentleman made. The only way to balance and stabilize trade and money and distribution thereof is a one-world government one world leader, and globalizational socialism. And we're now being indoctrinated into that and setting the stage for Superman. Uh, I think we're all pretty much in the same age group here. I know there's some that's younger. But do you folks remember when the comic books of Batman and Superman and all of them was on the... My brother would look for all month to get a Superman, a Superman comic book that cost a dime. And he would read it and read it and read it because he, he loved it. He, he got engrossed in it. 
And uh, it was just become a thing to him. And uh, that Superman is nothing compared to the Superman that's coming. And you need to be aware of that. So we're now being indoctrinated. Uh, turn over, Wilma, would you get me quick uh, 2 Corinthians 4.4? 4. <clears throat> and we want to certainly understand uh, the things that is transpiring today and the things that's going to transpire uh, Paul, as I read here in the opening verse, said that we're not children of darkness, but we're children of light, and we need certainly to see the light of where we are now and where the uh, circumstances of life today are trying to take us. And we're going to see a kingdom come in. Have you got that, sis? Yes. Okay, now did you get that word by word? In whom the God of this world, Satan, has blinded them that what? Believe not. Now this gentleman that's set down by this pastor is not a believer in Jesus Christ. And that man has been blinded to where he doesn't realize that there's going to be one world kingdom, and that's going to be the kingdom of our God and His Christ. Is that not what the Bible says? And this man has already been deceived. And because of his deception, he is deceiving thousands of others. And it's, it's, it's a domino effect. But we being children of light, thank God He reveals these things to us, we can not only be aware for ourselves, but we can be aware for our children, our children's children, our friends, their children, and we can gather in meetings like this tonight and not only be aware of it, but talk about it and make sure that everybody understands that it's almost midnight. <clears throat> in <clears throat> Second Daniel... And also in the seventh chapter of Daniel, we covered this three weeks ago, so I won't go into it. But this kingdom that's going to be established, it is already in effect. It's already there. The old Roman Empire is a well and doing good in might in your day today. All they are waiting for is the king that will rule it. And that's going to transpire. We'll see it. When? I don't know. On God's timetable, in God's taking care of events, He will bring that into being. And uh, we're going to see it. And Daniel, five before John wrote this, about 465 years before, Daniel gave exact detail right down to the toes and the shoestrings of what that kingdom would look like and be like. In Daniel 7, 24, write that down and you can work on it tonight. All right, let's deal with what this gentleman said concerning uh, the part down here. One world government, one world leader, and one world religion. And as he put it to the pastor, you can have a one world government, you can have a one world leader, but you must have a religion to serve as glue to hold it all together. When this nation was formed, and it became an independent nation of states with freedom, liberty, justice for all, do you know what that is? Christianity. And it's fading today. It's being taken away from us, little by little. The textbooks are taking Christianity out, bringing Muslim or Islam in. I didn't know that until this morning. There's a school teacher. He can tell you how it's happening. Our children are going to be indoctrinated not in Christianity, but in Muslims or the Islam. And I was astounded when this news person 
said that today, well, she was talking to the man that had these books printed up for mine and your children in this ungodly school system to read and demoting Christianity, uplifting Islam. And she nailed him to the wall and said, why are you changing our textbooks? And he said, because there's six million Islam Muslims in the United States and we cannot show preference. What has happened to our country? If we're a Christian nation, let's stand upon the Christian foundation and let's teach Christ. Otherwise, leave the country. That's, that's what this brother told him. Son, wake up. You had your chance. Christianity is being phased out. And he went home back to Los Angeles suburbs and told his congregation of that. Uh, you know, we, we don't realize what's going on outside of our door until we get out there and run into people like this. You and I are, are so harbored and protected in the church and in our home, uh, the devil's having a heyday in our country. And we don't see it all because we're not active in that kind of a place and in those kind of a habitats. But it's happening. Yeah, you know, brother, I've been thinking about that. I think I'll see if I can get dual citizenship and get over there and then just... But I appreciate what that man said. So we are, we are being indoctrinated into this. And uh, in order is for the man's kingdom, for the leader, and uh, all of this to stand together and hold together, there has to be a glue, and that glue has to be religion. You know why? Because the devil's religious. Jim, he's more religious than you. You see, religion is man-made. Salvation is God-made. And you are not, and I are not religious, but we are Christ-centered, Christ-like. But the world doesn't know Him. So they have to have a Christianity, a, a, or not, excuse me, not a Christianity, but a, a religion. And this is what the false prophet provides is a religion that can do things that are outstanding, which will come out of the pit. And in order for him to be accepted in the world, he has to come forth from a religion that is accepted. So this is what I want to just spend a few minutes with it. So if you want to know what religion he will use, let's, uh, let's follow the trail of religion and go back to the very beginning of it, trace it down, and see what the name of it is. If you got a few minutes, let me give you some names. The first religious order and first religious worship that we see in the Bible is Nimrod and his people. Number one, they rebelled against God. God said to go and, and replenish the earth. Scatter out and replenish the earth. They refuse to do so. And they begin to build what? A tower. <clears throat> and the historians say that tower reached up to 600 feet before God stopped them. What were they going to do with that tower? Now, they knew they wasn't going to get to Mars and Mercury and way up there. But they was building a religious order, a religious throne that they would worship. Nimrod had a wife named Semiramis. That's a funny name. S-E-M-E-R-I-M-U-S. -E Semiramis. She was an evil woman, like Jezebel. And she knew what God had said in Genesis 3.15, that he would bring forth a seed. And the seed would destroy Satan's head, and in doing so, bruise his heel. She knew that. 
She knew that a son would be that one that brought that and began a religious order of that. Now, to cut time, this went all the way down, and you'll find it all the way through the Old Testament. It became, instead of her, her name, she changed her name to the Mother of God, and it became Ashtoreth and Tammuz. You'll find that Israel practiced it, and God made a judgment against it in Ezekiel 8.14 and Jeremiah 7.16, and he said, How vile can men be that they will practice this religion? He didn't call it religion, this idolatry, right at the door of the temple. That's how far it can go. That's how far it has gone down through the years. Now, for the sake of uh, a mixed congregation, I can't tell you what that religion was other than it was a relationship, an illicit relationship between a mother and her son all the way down. <coughs> the Macedonians, the Greeks, accepted it. Alexander and his mother became that kind of a what word would I use there? Relationship. And in doing so, Philip mysteriously died. And Alexander became the leader of the Macedonians as well as this church. It became Aphrodite and Adonis. And Rome even accepted it. What's the uh, emperor's name that I want? It killed all the Christians. Hung them on Nero. Nero and his mother picked this up. Ungodly relationship. And they called the religion Venus for the mother and Cupid for Nero. Today, the same religion is alive and well in the world today. It is still headquartered in Rome, and it is still called the Mother of God, and you see it all through your neighborhood. You got the name? The Catholics. And I'm not putting down innocent people that may be in it, but... Uh, she called herself in beginning this the mother of God. Today, when you go into a Catholic church, you'll see Mary with a baby in her arms, and she's called the mother of God. It's an idolatrous church, and the devil must have an idolatrous church as his vehicle for the beast and the false prophet to ride on and it will be an idolatrous church. Now you see that described in the 17th chapter of Revelations. God's going to destroy it. And it will begin just like any other church. Let me give you an example of something. Years ago, <clears throat> I was going over to, uh, I was working in Marysville, had a church there, and uh, was going over to Oakland, and I stopped at uh, Tracy. And uh, there was a, a brother, back in those days, there was a revival centers. Uh, church somewhere, they'd take over old theaters and convert them into churches. Church every night. Boy, you never had to go without church. Every night. <clears throat> and so this uh, brother had a church in Tracy. And I stopped there and went in. And when I went into that place, it was just like going into the pit of the devil. And uh, we sat through services. And after services, he said, Brother Tilly, I don't know what is wrong here. It just seems like there's no presence of God, and God isn't doing anything. And I said, well, Brother, <clears throat> you see all those idols? Around? He was renting a Catholic, an old Catholic abandoned church. They had built a new one. He said, you see those idols up there? It was kind of, it was a square building, but it had a thing like this all the way around it. And they had the, the heads of the apostles sitting up there. All 12 of them. I said, do you see those idols sitting up there? Well, that's the heads of the apostles. 
I said, those are idols. They were put here by the people that was here before you. And that's why God isn't honoring you. That's why God isn't moving here, because there's idolatry. I don't care if you're Pentecostal. If you've got idols, God is not going to put up with it. And you can make an idol out of anything. In this case, uh, they had moved off to their new building, and uh, here was Paul and Peter and John and James and Methathalu and, and all of them setting up there on that thing, looking down over his congregation, which wasn't very many. And he got rid of the things, and God began to move. And it don't matter. It doesn't have to be the head of an apostle. It can be anything that your heart is devoted to above God. So we have to be careful with that. But this is the plan, and this will be the harlot. Always has been, always will be. God called her a harlot and said that she had seduced the nations. She had drank the blood of the martyrs of the saints. And if you want to see just how bad it is, get Fox's Book of Martyrs and see how that they destroyed innocent people. Mothers, dads, children, because they would not accept Catholicism and would did not deny the lordship of Jesus Christ. Even though they've got a, a mother up here holding a little baby with a gold cross, that's idolatry, don't mean nothing. So, the plan is now being conceived in leaders around the world. The glue will be an apostate church system and it's alive and well in America today. And the God of this world is now grooming the leader of it. When he will appear, we don't know. But when he does appear, and uh, let me say something and don't be offended. How many of you promise not to be mad at Brother Tilly? And don't go home and say something I didn't say. But you and I witnessed this past year just how the beast is going to come into preeminence and power. Now, I'm not, I don't want you to go home and say, I said Obama was the, 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 was the uh, beast. He is not. But he will be fawned over. He will be loved People will go crazy over him, just like they did over this man. You saw a spirit, not his, but a spirit in the land today that promoted something that they wanted to take over in the United States. And I will tell you this, if he is not assassinated, he's going to take us into socialism and take us into globalized socialism by connecting us with Europe. Do you remember how he was received in the European nations last summer? Almost like a god? Not him, but it will be the spirit that went caused people to go crazy over him. Brother Ron, God bless you. I think I got the people pretty upset. You can come and calm them down with prayer. 